Good evening, Facebook. How's everybody doing? So I wanted to jump on this evening and talk to you about the blog that I posted yesterday. I hope you got a chance to read it. Um, but mainly talk to you about the four big changes that you're going to see in the brand new improved nutritional food label. If you are catching this on the replay, my name is Amanda Nybird. I'm a registered dietitian specializing in bariatric and weight loss nutrition. And my goal is to provide relevant nutritional strategies to help you stay on track or get back on track with your weight loss. So reading the food label is probably the most powerful thing that you can do to manage your nutritional choices. It is the one thing that I try to get my patients to do um, across the board, I tell them, if you can read a food label, then you can pick up any product in a store, um, at a restaurant, and kind of look at it and say yay or nay. So many people that I work with are just like, tell me what to eat. Give me a list. Give me a specific foods that I can and can't eat. And I, I just need to make it simple. And that's good. It will get you somewhere but it will not help you for the rest of your life because there's always new products coming out. There's always confusing information being put out by um, celebrity doctors and, and personalities. People are saying, eat this, you should eat that. And so it's really hard to figure out what's good and what's not. So if you have a label, if you have the ability to look at a food label and decipher on your own, okay, this looks good, or this doesn't, it's just gonna take you much further with regards to your weight loss journey. One of the big things that we do in the programs I run is we track, we do daily tracking. And it is by far the most eye-opening part of the program, nutritional awareness. And tracking requires us to read our food labels. So I'm excited because a couple of years back, the government has redesigned the food label to hope it to hopefully make it easier for you to read it and get quality information from the food label. So if you checked out my blog, you can see the difference between the old food label and the new food label. So I'll be sure to post, um, I'll tag my blog below. So if you didn't get a chance to read that, you'll be able to do that. But I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go um, over the four big changes that you're gonna see on the food label. And I'll say, as a dietitian, I'm super excited about these changes. Um, are they the end all be all? No, we still have a long way to go, but it's definitely a major step in the right direction. So I'm excited when I pick up a product and it has the new label um, and it's taken a while. So um, as we move forward, you're gonna see these new labels pop up here and there. So the first big change that you're gonna see on the food label is the serving size. And this is the most important change that they made. The serving size is now going to better reflect what the actual serving is. So a lot of people don't realize when you read a food label, it's generally for more than one serving. For example, if you get a box of cereal, um, the food label is not just for the whole box. Some people think that. The food label is actually just for one serving. So it may just be for a cup of cereal. It may be for you know a half a cup of cereal. But you really have to determine the serving size to determine what you're truly eating. Am I eating one serving? Am I eating two? Am I eating three? The problem is, is that manufacturers use this at a, as a way to um, be sub sub um, deceptive, deceptive to you. So for example, if you got a bottle of soda, if you got like a 16 ounce bottle of soda, you may not have realized that that soda bottle was two servings. Now, who do you know buys a 16 ounce bottle of soda, drinks half of it, puts it in the refrigerator and drinks the other half tomorrow? Not many. If we grab a 16 ounce bottle of soda, we're probably gonna drink the whole soda. So the government has mandated that the serving size should reflect what the actual serving is. So now if you buy a serving of a 16 ounce bottle of um, Coke or, or Pepsi or whatever, the serving size is not two, the serving size is one bottle. So it, it specifically reflects what we're eating. For example, Okay, so here's a bag of Doritos, all right? Now, when you buy this bag of Doritos, this is a snack bag of Doritos, do you think you're gonna eat half the bag? Or even better, do you think you're gonna eat a third of the bag um, and, and put it away? 
No, you're probably going to eat the whole bag. Well, the deceptive marketing of this food label is the fact that this bag has three servings, okay? So when someone quickly picks up this bag of Doritos, they think, oh, it's got 140 calories or it's got 16 carbs, not too bad. They're thinking that's for the whole bag, all right? Very rarely do we actually look and see, oh, but there's actually three servings in this bag. So I'm not just getting 100 and 40 calories, I'm actually getting 420 calories. And who has a calculator out to calculate all that very quickly? Not many people. So now when we pick up a bag of chips, here's a bag of Funyuns. My son is begging to eat these. He says, mom, when are you gonna do your video so I can eat the Funyuns? But now you'll see that it has the label, I'm sorry, the, the letters are backwards, but it has a label for the serving and then it has the label for the whole bag. And this is so much more clear marketing to you because you're gonna eat the whole bag. You don't need to know what the serving is. You need to know that this whole bag has 340 calories. This whole bag has 45 grams of carbs. So big changes in serving sizes. And that's probably the thing that I'm most excited about with regards to the new label is accurate serving sizes. So when you buy a can of soup, it's not two servings anymore. It's one serving because we don't eat a half a can of soup. We eat a whole can of soup. So look for that. That's really exciting to see. The next thing that you're going to see is they have completely done away with calories from fat. It's gone. And you know why this is so great? Because we are beginning to start um, de-villainizing, is that a word? I don't know. But de-villainizing fat because fat is not the enemy. Fat is not to be feared. So we don't need to be very conscious of how many calories are coming from our fat because it's not fat the issue, okay? Carbohydrates and sugars are the issue. So this is the government's way of saying, we get it, we realize in 1977 we were really wrong, we're gonna start making really small, um, really small, you know, back step, back pedals to right or wrong, um, and that is that they're taking away the calories from fat. So it doesn't matter, you know, a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. It doesn't matter if it comes from carbs or if it comes from fat, it's a calorie. So we don't need to differentiate between calories from um, carbs and, and sugars and proteins and calories from fat. So that's gone, you're not gonna see that anymore. The third thing that you're gonna see, oh, two, three. The third thing you're gonna see on the food label is the second thing I'm most excited about. And that is the addition of added sugar, okay? And this is really important because manufacturers add a ton of sugar to products to make it more palatable, to make our taste buds more heightened, to make our taste buds crave it and want it. So they're doing this intentionally. You know, I saw research, um, I mean, a couple of years ago that, that compared um, Oreos to heroin, like the response in the brain from when we eat Oreos is exactly the same as when someone takes heroin. It's significant, it's euphoric, and it has to do with all this added sugar. Um, and the benefit of manufacturers having to label added sugar is that they're gonna take it out. And that means that that food's gonna become healthier. Because if you pick up a product and it has, you know, 20 grams of added sugar, well, hopefully you're not gonna eat it. Why would you eat a product with so much added sugar? So you'll notice on the food label, you have total carbohydrates. Indented, but below the food label, I mean, below total carbohydrates is fiber, sugar, and now you're gonna see added sugar. So when we look at total carbohydrates, it's actually the sum or almost the sum of those three numbers. There are such thing as like other carbohydrates. So fiber is good for you. Fiber fills you up. Fiber keeps you full. Fiber helps you lose weight. So in my program, we focus on net carbs. So we actually get to subtract fiber because I want my clients eating as much fiber as possible. The more fiber, the better, all right? But that is factored into total carbohydrates. The next thing you'll see is sugar. Now, sugar is simply what is naturally occurring in that food. So like, for example, when you eat a banana, it's gonna have, you know, maybe 10, 15 grams of sugar, but that's naturally occurring sugar. Now, it's not to say that that sugar is better for you than added sugar, but it's just to say that, 
you know, nothing was added to it, okay? When you buy banana pudding, it's gonna have the sugar from the banana, which probably isn't much because it was probably banana flavoring and not real bananas. But the, the sugar that comes from the banana, and then you're gonna see how much sugar they add to that pudding um, to, to give it that really sweetened and heightened taste. So, again, the good news about the fact that they're having to list added sugars is most likely it's going to cause them to take them away. So. Anytime you have a product that has a lot of added sugar, that's going to be really negative. That's going to be really negative. So take a look at that. The fourth thing that they've changed is the vitamin. So down at the bottom, um, right now on our current food label, we have vitamin A, we have vitamin C, we have calcium and iron. Um, so they switch it up a little bit because most people are not deficient in vitamin A and C. We are more deficient in um, D, so now they list D, they list calcium, and they list iron, and they list potassium, because there are some people with medical conditions that will need to track their potassium intake. So take a look at the new food label. It is so awesome. So I wanna show you a couple of examples of items that I found to show you the old food label versus the food label. So to give you an example of that drink um, aspect. So here is, two kombuchas. Um, these are great probiotic drinks. They're very refreshing. They give you tons of um, um, all natural probiotics, so they're really good to use. So this is um, one that I really like. Again, sorry, everything's backwards, but it's called Synergy. So this has an old food label. All right, so this is eight fluid ounces. Now I'll tell you, when I buy this drink, I'm not gonna drink half of it and put it away and save the other half for tomorrow. I'm gonna drink the whole bottle. So deceptive marketing. They have two servings. So you look at this, it's only got 30 calories. It's only got seven carbs. Well, if you weren't apt to looking at the serving size, you would think that this was a very low calorie, low carb drink, but you gotta double everything. So now the new food label, so here's a look at the new food label, is actually you'll see the serving size is one bottle. So now it shows you that in one bottle, which is exactly what I'm going to drink, it has 70 calories. It has 18 grams of carbs. You can also see that it includes 16 grams of added sugar. Now, in order to ferment kombucha, you do have to add sugar to it, so that's why this product has more sugar in it and probably um, to make it a little bit more palatable. But you can see there's 17 total sugars and 16 of them are added sugars. So, woo, might wanna watch out for that. Okay. So when we look at our, ooh, I love this. Again, my kids are salivating because they get uh, they get junk food, junk food tonight. So I've got my gobstoppers, and I pick up my gobstoppers. Deceptive labeling. So this thing of gobstoppers has nine servings. How many people have gone on a road trip, grabbed one of these, and eaten the whole box? Everybody, everybody, okay? We don't eat one, this does not last us nine days, okay, for sure. So when we look at this, with the nine servings, it has 60 calories and has 14 grams of carbs. Not so bad, but 60 times nine, I did the math, had to get my calculator out, is 540 calories. Six, um, 14 times nine is 160 carbs. This stuff will do damage, which obviously we know that to be the case. But it's hard to figure out truly how much damage you're gonna do when you're just reading the label. Now, I found this sweetest fish, okay, and it has a new label on it. So again, you can see where it gives you the serving and then it gives you the whole box. Because I guarantee you, if you buy this box of Swedish uh, fish in the movie theater, you are going to eat the whole box, okay? You are not gonna eat it over a three day period. So there's three servings. So the whole box of Swedish fish gives you 320 calories. The whole box of Swedish fish gives you 80 grams of carbohydrates. The whole box of Swedish fish, um, Swedish fish has 67 grams of added sugar. 67 grams, okay? That is very impactful. When you pick this up and you see that, it's very impactful with regards to when you look at the whole label. When you look that it has 27 carbs and it has 100 calories, it has zero fat. Ooh, that's a big one. 100 calories, zero fat, 
People will pick that up. They think that's a good, they think that's a good food. You know, not too bad. But when you start looking at the, the whole serving and you start looking at sugars and carbohydrates, that's where you're going to see the difference. Okay? So, love the new label. Again, I showed you in before the Doritos. So, my bag of Doritos has um, 420 calories, 48 grams of carbs. Very hard to decipher and figure out. Whereas my new bag with my new label gives me all of that information right there. So my Funyuns have 340 calories. Um, they have 45 grams of carbs. Um, and they have one gram of added sugar. Not too bad with regards to added sugar. So I encourage you to read your food labels. Be aware of what you're eating. Don't be influenced by what other people are saying is good for you. Know the facts. Focus on carbohydrate control. Focus on foods that are high in fiber. And focus on real food. Probably the best food you can buy doesn't have a label because it's real food like vegetables and fruits and things like that. So it's not a bad idea to look for food without the label. So hopefully you found this information beneficial. I hope you read your labels. I hope you track your food. It's a, a huge, um, new, it's a, a great nutritional strategy to keep you on track or get you back on track. If you found this information beneficial, I encourage you to use the share button below. Give me some likes and loves. I would love to see if you felt like this was good information. Um, share with your friends and family. Let them know about um, the things that we've got going on. I've got new programs starting on October the 30th. This is the best time to invest in your health and wellness, right before the holidays. Get on track. You're gonna have a good four weeks before Thanksgiving to really solidify those nutritional strategies that are gonna help you not gain that 10 pounds over the holiday. So I'm gonna put my link to my blog. I'm gonna put my link to the program starting on the 30th, and I wanna help you. If you're not sure if my programs are right for you or how I can help you, sign up for a 20 minute free consult. I would love to talk to you. I definitely wanna work with you, especially in the new year, 2018, and get you keeping on track or getting back on track with your health and wellness. Thanks, everybody. I hope you have a great Tuesday night, and I will be talking to you soon. Bye.